Check it out guys, the 466 block is back. And we got the head back. There's all our main caps and the bolts that go along with that. We got a box full of parts and pieces here. We got liner kits, we got bearing kits, we got o-ring kits, we got gasket kits and seal kits and pan gasket kits and kits of kits and more kits. I got more gasket kits and another gasket kits and we got injector kits and we got seals and kits and lifter kits. We got all the kits and 11,000 pieces to clean and put back together. And our block is back from the machine shop. So I had this sent out, I had it hot tanked. And of course, when I sent it out, they, like they jet wash it, hot tank it, clean it all up a little bit, stuff like that. It saves me a lot of time. It's only a couple hundred bucks to get that done. They double checked my measurements on the head. They said the head is good, or the head, the engine deck. The deck is good, so we don't need to surface that. So I'm gonna have to clean that up myself, which is fine. Uh, they also line honed the mains. We had apparently one main cap that they had to resize to get everything right. So that's one of the reasons I like to send these blocks into the machine shop. They're able to do that kind of stuff that I'm not. We got our new cam bearings installed in there. I can't do that either. I don't have the tooling for it. So now it, the block is essentially ready to be prepped to be reassembled. But now that I have my parts, now that I have my block back, the first thing I need to do is drop those liners in here and check liner protrusion. The counter bores measure good, but you never really know until you actually get your liner in there. So I need to do a, a dry test, put those liners in, check protrusion, and make sure that they're good before I start cleaning anything else up. Because if I have a counter bore that needs to be cut, then we're gonna get metal shavings everywhere and all that kind of stuff. So there's no sense in cleaning this up twice. So the first thing I need to do is unpack the liners, drop them in, check my liner protrusion, and uh, if everything checks out good on that end of it, then I can start cleaning out the bolt holes and all the other stuff and getting this thing all prepped and ready to reassemble. So now things are starting to get exciting on this one. I like it. So let's get those liners out and get them unpacked and see what we got. All right, so we have got Interstate McB. That is a pretty common name and aftermarket support for the 466 engines. So let's get these opened up and see what we got. And there's our new mess that we've got to work with. So every one of these liner kits came with obviously the liner and the piston installed in the liner, but there's no piston rings on it. So that's just for packaging that they're together. We got our package of piston rings. They actually came with new piston cooling jets. I wasn't expecting that. And of course we have our liner packings and the snap rings for the wrist pin for the piston. New wrist pins, new pistons, new liners. All right. Now, like I said before, first thing I'm gonna do is throw these liners in and test fit them. Why that's important, I'll get to that yet. After the liners are test fitted and we find out everything is good there, then I'm gonna move on to gapping the piston rings and then we'll start assembling all this stuff. Well, I guess I have to clean the block up properly first and then we'll move on. Anyway, I usually just throw the liners in, test fit them, make some measurements, and then I just show you guys where I wound up with my numbers and then we just move on. Same thing with the piston rings. I usually just go ahead and throw them in, do my checks, write the numbers, file the rings, and then I just come back and show you my fancy chart with all my numbers and everything there where it wound up being. And I might talk about it a little bit, but I don't actually show the process. On this particular engine, we're gonna walk through all of those steps. And the reason why I'm, I don't usually do that is because it just takes so much time, and I don't have time for that. But the thing is, this channel has grown so fast, it's getting a lot more attention than I ever imagined. So obviously there's a lot of people that are interested in, in, in this kind of thing, whether they're DIY guys or whether they're professional mechanics just looking for specific information on a certain job or gearheads or just people that are interested in what does a mechanic do anyway. I don't know, there's all kinds of different people, but it seems to me at this point that it's probably worth my time to go through and show all of those steps, at least how I do it in my shop, because I started this channel for you, not for me. I don't have time to do all this stuff, um, but it's entertainment, right? And there's guys can learn, there's good information, we can trade back and forth some stuff. So that's why I'm doing it. Appreciate you guys watching. And I'm gonna walk through all the steps so that you can follow this rebuild from the ground up and kind of have an idea of what all goes into these jobs. So let's get going then. Okay, I'll get the liners in here and then I'll try and explain why it's important to check that protrusion. Um, protrusion just meaning how high it sticks up above the, the deck. So 
First thing you want to do is make sure your counter bores are clean and this block has been cleaned but you just got to make sure. So I like to take a pick and go around the inside and just make sure there's nothing in there. If I, if I go around that inside corner and I look at my pick and there's anything on there, which in this case there isn't, if there's something on there, that counter bore is not clean enough. You cannot have any schmutz in there that's going to lift that thing up or make it sit to one side or the other. You want everything as nice and perfect as you can. So I'll run this along on each one of these and just make really sure that I've got these clean. I did wire brush this before it went to the machine shop. I couldn't test fit my liners at that point because I didn't have the new liners yet. And you always want to do your protrusion checking with the new liner. All right, let me go grab some liners and plunk them down there. Everything's nice and clean and shiny. We'll get started. All right, the liners are all in. Now let's talk about this protrusion thing a little bit here. Okay, that's how your liners sit in the engine, just like that. And those eagle-eyed guys out there are gonna notice that I have all of the part numbers on that end. These are not keyed or aligned in any way. They can spin freely, uh, especially when you don't have O-rings on them yet. Uh, so why do uh, are they all set like that? I, this is for no reason other than that I just think it looks nice. I always install them with those, those numbers lined up. I don't know, just pride in my work or whatever. It makes zero difference to anything. Nobody will see it. Nobody will care. I just think it looks nice. Now on your liner, you're going to notice that you have a step here. And when you put your head down on top, somehow something has to seal that liner to the head so your combustion gases in the cylinder don't sneak out and get out of here, right? So you have to have a pretty good sealing material on here to seal that combustion in there with the head squishing down. And that's where the head gasket comes in. So when we look at our head gasket, you have your sort of base material that just seals the head to the deck of the block. But then you have, you notice these sort of tin insets in here. These are what you call your fire ring. And that guy right there, his job is to seal the combustion gases inside that cylinder between the head and that lip right there. This step on top is just for strength. It seals on this outside lip. So when you put your head gasket on, you see that lip there? That gasket fits perfectly around all of those liners and goes that steel crush ring goes right over top of that lip. And that's, that's the key right there, crush ring. So now that you can't see this, I guess, but there's a step here where the liner is lower than what this gasket is. So when the head sits on top of here, that head sits flat on that crush ring, on that fire ring, and it, when you torque it down, it presses like crazy and it will actually crush that gasket and make it thinner, kind of like a spring. And that becomes your seal around here. So in order to get the right crush, the liner has to be so-and-so high and the head has to be so-and-so torqued. It's a very fine calculation that the engineers have done to get this right because if you have too little crush, then the pressure will overcome the amount of friction that's there and it'll just blow out the head gasket. And if you have too much crush, it'll squish the gasket right out and break it. So you have to be right in the middle. So there's, there's a window, there's a tolerance that you can have. And that's why it's so important to have your liner, liner protrusion in the right tolerance window so that when you put your head down, if everything is flat, you get exactly the right amount of crush on those fire rings and it'll seal just perfectly. So that's the story behind that. So going along with that, when you, your liner protrusion is checked in four places, you want to have four places that are across from each other and you average those out to get sort of the average protrusion. But when you measure this one and let's say it's three thou and this one's four thou and this one's one thou, 
and this one's four thou, four thou, three thou, that one that's one thou, that's a little bit lower, might be too low to the point where this one is now too high, this one is too low, and now your flat head can't seal across there anymore. Like that gasket will flex and give a couple thou, so you, you only have a few thou to work with to keep this all perfectly straight all the way across. So ideally, you want the liners sitting in there flat, not angled this way or this way or this way or this way, which does happen as they wear. They sometimes wear more on one side than the other and that liner will actually sit in there crooked. And then you have to recut your counter bores and either surface the deck or shim them back up to the right height. There's different ways of doing that. But uh, you got to make sure that these are all even and that they're the right protrusion. So there's actually a little bit of stuff going on here. So let's get the dial bore gauge out. Dial bore gauge, we're not doing that. Let's get the liner protrusion gauge and just see where we're at with all of these. Now, before you go and check your liner protrusion, you got to bolt these liners down. The idea for that is you want to make sure that they're seated completely, 100% for sure, for sure. And if the bore is wore at an angle, if you put the bolts in there and clamp it down, it'll pull that liner to whatever angle the bore is, so you'll get an accurate reading. Albeit you'll be able to see it needs work, but at least you get an accurate reading. Whereas if it's wore and you just set the liner down inside there, it'll balance on whatever high spots it needs to to sit, you know, basically where it wants, and you won't get an accurate measurement. Now the problem with this engine is these are M15 metric bolts. And if you know anything about metric bolts, you know that M15 is not actually a size. But if we measure it, that's what you get, 14.98. So you can't just walk into your local JR bearing and pick up these bolts. They're not a size that I can get my hands on. So what are you supposed to do? Well, if you go by the book, you got to use this ZTSE 25151 cylinder liner holding adapters. And that's what they look like. Well, I don't have that, and I'm not gonna go buy that to do this job either. So what I did do, I made my own bolts. So that's a 5 8 bolt, kinda half cross-threaded onto cut-off head bolts. I took the old head bolts that were for here, I cut a bunch of them off about two inches in length, and then I put those nuts, flange nuts on, and welded them in. So now I have my own liner hold-down bolts. Now that we got that figured out, let me throw those bolts in here and I'll get right back with you. Okay, we got all the bolts in. Now the book wants you to torque them all to 40 foot-pounds and then retorque them all to 80 foot-pounds. And I didn't torque these. I just put them in with the old DeWalt Zippy-Doo. Now, in principle, as I said before, the idea is to have enough pressure to hold those liners down against the bottom of the counterbore. So the torque spec is not that important at this point. Just make sure they're tight. And don't use a Milwaukee. Use a good impact like a DeWalt because if you ever talk to the Milwaukee guys, those impacts have 18,397,270 foot-pounds. You pull the trigger on an engine this small, it'll just screw the thing right in half. So use a real tool. Now the reason why I only have two bolts per liner instead of four like I'd like to is because I have a clearance issue with my protrusion tool because I use a deck bridge. And that is a deck bridge right there. So this tool is made by Proform. I bought that on Amazon. It has magnets in the bottom, so it magnets itself to your steel deck and it doesn't move. And this gauge is just a snap-on gauge that I screwed into there. So I have a clearance issue with the bolts if I put four bolts per uh, liner because you have to be able to line this up and then swing it in like that in order to measure it. And if I have a bolt in here, then this doesn't fit. I can't, I can't get it in there. So that's why I only have two per liner. It's not really ideal, but it's going to be enough to figure out what I need to figure out here. So with that said, let's start measuring. Okay, so now you can see if I had another bolt in here, I wouldn't be able to move this to check my protrusion, right? Because it would be hitting that bolt. So that's why I have to do it that way. Now, first thing we've got to do is zero our gauge. Okay, we're zeroed out there. I'm just on a very small shelf right here just because of the way this is working out. So I just want to move this back and forth and make sure it doesn't move. That seems like it's all flat, so that's good. Double check, we're zeroed. So now all I'm gonna do is just run my uh, pointer on top of that lower flange on there, and we should be up higher than the deck. So let's just move it over. 
like that. So we are one, two, three and a quarter thou above the deck. Now I'm going to go along and I'm going to do this measurement on each one of the cylinders all the way down and I'll record those all and then I'll switch to this side and do all of these ones all the way down and then I need to rearrange my bolts and then I'll do the front and the rear of each cylinder liner and mark those ones down. Okay, so we got our first set done. Here's how we're looking so far. And so the average is showing, I don't know, 1.6 to up to 2 thou protrusion. So we're a little low as far as what the spec is because our spec is 2 thou minimum, 5 thou maximum. But we're fairly even if you look at the graph there. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and flip these bolts around and then we'll get the other measurements done. So this is where we wound up here. So our number one cylinder has an average of 3.4 thou, number two is 3.3 thou, 3.4 thou, 3.9 thou, 3.9 thou, 3.8 thou. Now if we go back to our service manual right here, so we have cylinder sleeves and then we go down, we have maximum allowable variation of counterboard depth between four points. So across all these measurements, we are not supposed to have more than one thou of variation or deviation. So if we check where we're at, it looks like three and a quarter thou on number one is the lowest and three and a half is the highest. On number two, three thou is gonna be our lowest. Three and a half is the highest. Number three, looks like three and a quarter is the lowest. Three and a half is the highest. Number four, ooh, number four was almost perfect all the way across. So we got a half a thou difference there again. And number five, four thou, four thou, four thou, three point seven five. So we have quarter thou difference. And on number six, same thing. So we got three and a half up to four. So we got half a thou difference. So we're 100% within spec all the way across. All right, so we're happy with our liner protrusion. Looks very good. So now we're gonna go through and prep the block the rest of the way so we can start assembly. Now that I know that I don't have to send it off for any more machining. So I'm gonna pull these bolts all back out, pull the liners back out. They're gonna get set in order so that the same liners go in the same places so that I know that our protrusion is gonna be the way I measured it. And then I gotta go through and clean all the oil galleries and everything else. So let's get to that. Mm -hmm. 